Greetings everyone and welcome to another exciting edition of Cooking with Zarin Isaac. So today we're going to make one of my all-time favorites, a long-time staple in the Zarin Isaac household, namely steak. Yes, a good old steak dinner with uh, sautéed mushrooms. I actually got proper actual garlic cloves this time. Usually I just throw in some garlic powder with the, uh, with the, st with the mushrooms. But uh, we're just going to use this as basic seasoning for the steak. And uh, anyway, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's get out all our stuff, shall we? I got a little bit of a head start. Uh, I always put the potatoes in beforehand because they take the longest to do. So basically, as far as the uh, potatoes go, I just used uh, these ones. Normally, I use russet potatoes. But uh, these are, I don't know what you can see here, Okanagan grown. <laughs> but they're the yellow potatoes. Um, which normally you use for mashing and stuff like that, but uh, I figured I'd use, uh, I just had them basically, and they bake perfectly fine. So potatoes are probably the easiest thing to do. Just wash them, stab them a whole bunch of times with a fork so they don't explode in your stove, and then put them directly on the grill. Some people like to put tin foil around them. I find putting tin foil around them, uh, I don't know, traps the moisture. So the skin isn't as crispy. I like the skin nice and crispy. It's also why I leave the potatoes in way longer than everything else. They are actually the last thing to come out of the oven. All right, so first things first, want to kind of get things going here. The potatoes are well on their way. So uh, just need to get everything else going basically. So the first thing I do, normally this would be a steak pan, <laughs> but I don't actually have a proper steak pan. Get some additional light on here. Ah, there we go. Um, slightly different colored lighting for both cameras here. 
So what I use is uh, the good old casserole dish, the same one you saw me cook pork ch chops in before. And I go over here to the toaster oven and pull out the grill from the toaster oven. <laughs> and that actually sits quite nicely in the pan, as you can see. It just kind of balances in. You gotta be careful not to put too much weight on one side or the other because that can happen very easily. So I pretty much got this down to a science now. So. All right, so today's cut of meat, we have sirloin tip, which as you can see was on sale. Always always like to grab steak when it's on sale because it tends to be expensive. So this was uh, this was actually 10 bucks. Not too bad. I'm gonna have a look on this camera. There you go. This is actually three steaks. I usually get packs of three because, you know, if it's just me, that's, that's three dinners basically right there. Meal prep for the win. All right, so let's take these out. Um, actually, before we do that, before we do that, we want to get the mushrooms going. So first things first, I'm going to take a block of real butter, a little no-name brand, got to love it. And uh, I'm just going to set this aside here, and we're just going to chop off a chunk of butter here. Just get a nice, nice hunk of butter to start melting in the pan there. So, uh, I'm not sure when you're watching this. If you're here live, hello, welcome. If you're not here live, you're watching this on a repeat somewhere, either on Twitch or YouTube or who knows where. Um, this is being done right before Saturday Night Insanity, so there's going to be a lot of live streaming tonight. So, normally I do dinner either during or after, but since I started doing these as uh, sort of their own thing, I figured we'd do it before. There we go. That's probably too much butter, but I don't care. Butter's good. I like butter. Butter, 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 butter. I just put that on actually below medium. I put it on, um, let's see, the, the dial here goes to 10. <laughs> so I put it on about three and a half. So yeah, fairly low, almost just simmer heat. You don't really want to incinerate them. Maybe you do. I'm just showing you how I do it. But uh, yeah, so anyway, just a little chunk in there. And that's that. And just wrap her up and put her back in the fridge. Put her back in the ice box. <laughs> so I know we like to use current up-to-date terminology here. Oh, I was going to say, where'd the title go? But that's no, it's there. Never mind. All right. So, just to make it melt a little faster, we'll put the lid on it because, well, we're going to keep the lid on it most of the time anyway. I usually keep, I keep, bless you. Thanks, Dad. Uh, Rosie's just watching Skylanders over on the couch I there while I'm cooking. It. Oh, okay, cool. Um, I usually keep the lid on just to kind of keep the moisture in and stuff like that. Otherwise, as it's boiling off, that's moisture that's boiling off, right? So I want to keep that in, keep everything nice and soft and tasty. All right. Hello, how's it going? I'm doing good. <laughs> Rosie, ladies and gentlemen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, I think I just woke up from a really long nap. Well, she's even laying around on the couch all day. True. <laughs> You need help with dinner? Oh my god, oh. yes, you got more bananas. I did, I got a big bunch of them. Yes. They're Chiquita, Chiquita bananas. Because I'm a Chiquita banana. <laughs> Why are there so many in a bunch? I don't know, that's just so many. That was like eight bucks, I couldn't believe it. For like one. Actually, no, that wasn't eight bucks. The grapes were eight bucks. You got more? I got more grapes. Yes! And I, got more... I can actually handle something yes. for breakfast. And I got more strawberries. Why can't I open this? Uh, so you got... So much fruit. I did. I got a bunch of fruit for you. Yay! Because I know you love it. All right. And it's literally the only thing I've done for breakfast. Okay, you're distracting me. Go away. Come to help. There's nothing to help with. Can I stir something? There's nothing to stir. What are you going to stir? The steak? <laughs> I'll stir the steak. <laughs> the stove. garlic bread? Like. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay. Mm -hmm. We'll see you in a little while, kid. Bye. Bye. You hear me sneeze. It's because I sneezed. Yep. Wow, that's deep. <laughs> Alright, see now. 
Uh, I, I'm definitely one of those stay the hell out of my kitchen types when I'm, when I'm cooking. <laughs> if I come off a little cranky, that's why. I just don't like to be distracted when I'm cooking. But, um, all right, so here we go. So we got three, these are pretty nice, uh, nice cuts of meat. I get sirloin tip fairly often because it's not a terribly expensive cut of meat. And it's fairly tasty. Well, it's very tasty, actually, because it's sirloin tips. It's the tip of the sirloin. And, um... Um, cooks up really nice. It actually stays quite uh, quite tender. It's not like a super tough cut of meat at all, and uh, has a nice flavor to it. Nice and juicy. Um, my personal favorite, as I think I mentioned before, is uh, strip loin, which is really good. That's the kind that has kind of a layer of fat down the side, and it's just a solid block of really delicious tender meat. And once again, I always rinse out the the meat wrappers so as to uh, minimize stinkage in the garbage. And uh, let me go from there. All right. Those butters should be pretty, oh, that's coming along nicely. Very good. So let's get our, uh, let's get our mushrooms out. And because I'm lazy, I actually got this package of pre-peeled garlic cloves, yes. Now the one thing I do like to do is cut off the little crunchy end, you know what I mean? Uh, I don't like the crunchy ends. Oh shit, there they go. You okay, Dad? Yeah, I'm fine. It just uh, fell off the counter. Oh. Yeah, it's disappeared into the abyss. I'm going to have to fish it out at some point. I can see anyway. you, Daddy. Yeah, great, because I'm on the monitor there. Stop distracting me. All right, so basically, see the little crunchy end there? We just want to cut that off. I mean, you can cook it with that, and that'll tender up as well, but I don't know, I'm kind of fussy. Probably should have done this part before. Oops. <laughs> oh well. You know what? We're just going to actually start tossing these in as they're ready. Um, as you can see, I like a lot of garlic. Did I miss one there? No. We're good. Alright. So. Mm. Garlic is good for the heart. The more you eat, the more you fart. way bigger knife than I need to be using for this. I don't know, I just kind of use this knife for everything because it's mighty. <laughs> oh, yeah. And you get little nasty bits like that, just cut those off. Do not recommend the nasty bits. Yeah, as I was saying earlier, normally uh, I'll just throw some garlic powder in there, but uh, I find using the, the whole garlic cloves is way better. Because, <clears throat> of course, I like to have the garlic, or sorry, the mushrooms to eat with the steak. Like, I'll cut off a piece of steak and then grab a mushroom and eat it together. Um, so this way I've also got whole garlic cloves that I can use for that purpose, and it's even more numtacular. One thing I should get out of the fridge is well, that <laughs> the bullseye barbecue sauce. Yes, this is uh, this is just the bold original flavor. There's quite a few different flavors that they have, but um, I don't know. I, I find the the flavor of the original is quite nice. They have a few that are sort of meant for steak specifically, like uh, they have one called Steakhouse. They have one called, uh, like, it's a smoky mesquite kind of flavor and uh, stuff like that. Um, I forget, they got a couple other ones, too, that I've tried over the years. But um, they got one, actually, specifically for chicken and ribs, which is really good. If you guys watched the uh, 
Day in the Life of Zarin Isaac that I did many, many moons ago, which was my uh, big movie marathon video. Um, <clears throat> one of the things I made for that was ribs. Ew, squishy one. Yeah, that's uh, something that happens sometimes when you get the pre-peeled. Sometimes there are squishy ones. But um, I guess that's another good reason to be individually uh, handling them like this, cutting off the ends, because you can pick out the squishy ones as you go. Sometimes they're not all that obvious. If you just take them from the container and dump them in there, you could be dumping in some nasty ones and not even realize it. So, there you go. Another argument in favor of the tedium of doing this. But the thing I like about getting the pre-peeled, of course, is you don't have to peel it. Now, this process that I'm doing here, of cutting off the... Kind of another squishy one. And then uh, of, of cutting off the crunchy ends is something that I would do anyway, even if I was peeling them myself. But by getting them pre-peeled, I mean, it's, uh, it just saves you that extra step. Uh, you do, you definitely pay a bit more for them doing it that way. I mean, a garlic clove on its own is what, like a quarter? <laughs> but uh, you get a bag of these, um, and it represents, I don't know, maybe, maybe 10 cloves, like of the multi-headed ones, you know, you know what I mean. Um, and it's like four bucks. But, uh, you know, for the time it saves and the convenience, I don't mind. You know, I'm quite happy to pay that little premium just to save the time, you know. Alright, and the last one. A little bit of a nasty end there. There we go. Okay, so that is good to go. I'm going to put all these into the garbage. You, uh, one final look at them. There you go, it's all the ends. Can you smell it? Smell it? Sniff, sniff. <laughs> mm, it actually smells really good as well. It's garlic, and garlic smells wonderful. Alrighty, here we go. Now, we're just going to uh, actually leave these in here for a little while before we put the mushrooms in. Just give them a little extra time to soften up and uh, get them all wonderful. You know what? I'm even going to put a few more in there. Why not? Because uh, I love me some garlic. So those of you joining me on SNI tonight expect lots of uh, farts. <laughs> SNI is short for Saturday Night Insanity, by the way, for those of you who don't know. That's the uh, weekly geek chat that I do with uh, some of the other fine denizens of the interwebs. We talk about all kinds of stuff on there. Uh, movies, comic books, video games. Uh, we're all collectors of different things, so mostly movies and such. So we always show what we got this week and things like that. It's just generally a good time. A lot of joking around and goofing around and having fun. But with a definite focus on, uh, you know, geeky things, because that's what we're all into. And movies, because that's also what we're all into. And that is right here on Twitch. And if you miss it on Twitch, or if you're watching this on YouTube, you can catch the repeat right here on YouTube. <laughs> I always post them on YouTube the next day. Do -do. Yeah, it seemed like more when I initially dumped them out, but then when I put them in the pan, it didn't seem to be as much. There we go, that's much better. Much better. So one of those packages of pre-peeled garlic cloves generally uh, gives you enough for, or gives me enough for two hearty steak dinners. Uh, so because steak was on sale, there was actually a few there that were marked down. Um, I bought uh, another package of them as well. I'm just going to tape this down here. Go. Put it into the frig. Alright, so we're just gonna let these simmer for a little while. That is oh, it's already smelling really good. Hold on. What's that? Is that a nasty bit? 
is a little bit of a nasty bit. Let's just uh, trim that off, shall we? Trimmed a little bit too much, but whatever. We got lots of garlic to go around. Okay, good. That is good. Let's let that soften up for a bit. So now let's season up our uh, steak. Yeah, one of the problems of not having a proper steak pan is the grill portion of this is not particularly large. So I have to kind of position everything in such a way that it doesn't go off the edges. Yeah, that's, uh, that's not bad. That'll do. Now, for those of you who were here last time, you saw me cooking up a heck of a lot of ground beef. And with ground beef, I always cook it very, very thoroughly because, of course, with ground beef, you, uh, you, you, you know, there's a lot more places for bacteria to hide, I guess you could say. So it's the, it's the kind of meat that you want to uh, cook thoroughly. Now, some people do chance it and they cook their burgers, uh, you know, medium or medium rare, and they just like to have a nice juicy hamburger. I mean, but for me personally, I tend not to uh, do that. Now, seasonings, uh, fresh ground pepper and garlic powder. That's pretty much it. And there we go. Now, some people would say, and that's all you need because it's steak. You need nothing more with steak. Well, that's the beautiful thing about steak is there's a lot of different ways you can prepare it. For example, when I go to the Keg, which is a uh, steakhouse franchise here in Canada, I think I think they're in the states. I'm not entirely sure. Anyway, it's a steakhouse. You've been, you know what a steakhouse is like. Um, when I go there, I actually get steak done very differently from how I make it. Um, specifically, they have this type of steak called the baseball, which is just this huge block of meat, and the most they can cook it is medium rare because otherwise it'll ruin it basically because it's so thick. So I always get it medium, uh, or sorry, medium rare, Chicago style. And what Chicago style is, is they actually sear the outside, which basically seals all the juices in, but it gives you that nice tangy uh, charred flavor, just like a th very thin layer of it, just on the very outer edge, uh, just enough to give it that, that tanginess. And then, uh, and then they cook it to medium rare. And then I obviously get a side of mushrooms to go with that, of course, because those are wonderful. But, um, but yeah, pretty cool stuff. I really like, uh, like getting it that way. But how I prepare it at home is different because I don't have a barbecue. <laughs> I don't have a char broiler or anything like that. I guess I might be able to just broil it in the oven, but uh, broiling is such an exact science to get just right that I've used it very infrequently. So what I do is I season it up like this. And the whole idea, this is a technique that my father taught me basically. The whole idea is to try to duplicate that barbecue flavor at home without having a barbecue. Now, whenever we would barbecue steaks at the old homestead as a kid, my father would basically just do a light seasoning like this and then slather them in barbecue sauce and then put them on the grill. So then you get the nice grilled flavor of being on the gar barbecue, barbecue, <laughs> barbecue, in addition to the additional flavors of the uh, barbecue sauce. So in order to kind of duplicate that here at home, this is what I do. Take the bullseye barbecue sauce and just slather it all over. Oh yeah. So what this helps to do, well, is a couple of things. It helps to seal in the juices of the meat because it provides an outer layer of the sauce. And also, it kind of helps, it soaks in as it cooks. So it gives you some of that nice flavor. Now some have said, oh, on a barbecue, you put that much barbecue sauce, it's, it like overpowers the meat. Like, no, only if you've got a shitty barbecue sauce. No, this, uh, I mean, this is a, a pretty long running brand uh, here in Canada, and it most definitely does not overpower the meat. What it does is it add, adds to the natural flavor of the meat. 
Now, if you go and have it like I was talking about how I get it at the keg, that's basically just taking the natural flavor of the meat and adding some sear and some light seasoning to it. And that's fine. That is one way that you can do steak. There, there are a lot of ways you can do it. So when I do it at home, I like to do it this way because it kind of uh, emulates that barbecue experience without uh, having a barbecue. And quite frankly, barbecued steak is probably my favorite kind of steak. But, uh, you know, sometimes you're in the mood for something a little different, so get it done a little different. I mean, that's, that's the beauty of steak. And, uh, but, but I mean, personally, I would never slide off someone's personal preference for how they do steak, except for uh, if they put ketchup on it, because that's just silly. <laughs> also, actually, I'm not a big fan of well done, because to me, well done is actually ruining steak. In terms of how you season it, whether it's barbecue sauce or, you know, whatever, uh, but, I mean, that's a matter of personal preference. Some people like to cook it with no sauce and then dip it in barbecue sauce, which I think is crazy. But, I mean, if that's your thing, go for it. Enjoy. To me, steak is not to be dipped. It's to be... Oh, yeah, there we go. Yeah. <laughs> We're actually getting... It's because I'm using real butter. It, it browns it a little bit, eh? All right, so we can put the mushrooms in now. <coughs> So yeah, basically, long and short of it is, people have asked me, why the hell do you do steak like that? And it's like, well, that's the way my daddy taught me. <laughs> Simple as that. Uh, not to mention, I mean, just from personal experience, I, I find it's a really good way to make steak. Um, it tastes great, and, uh, you know, it's wonderful. And I mean, it says right on here uh yeah it's a little bit different here where they say put it on at the end and that's how i used to do it where i would actually um i would cook it with just the seasoning flipping it once seasoning the other side and then i would barbecue sauce that side during the last few minutes and flip it again barbecue sauce the other side that was the actual way my dad taught me to do it however it occurred to me one of the things you don't want to do is flip the meat too many times. When you flip the meat too many times, you're, you're letting out all the juices. You're losing juices that way. So now, over the years, I've taken that same technique and kind of refined it, so I actually only flip it once during the entire cooking process, thus ensuring the maximum juiciness. All right, so we don't need to use the oven mitts yet because it hasn't been cooked yet. So, actually, just before I do that, I will show you. Need the oven mitts for this part. There we go. I don't know how well you can see, but you can see I got some potatoes in there, and you can see that you might be able to see the little fork holes there. But uh, but yeah, so we got some potatoes in there, and then basically we just take. I put it like this in the middle of the rack because we also have a loaf of garlic bread from the local supermarket and this is great this is the easiest thing to do it's already made you just put it in in the bag um, so I leave a spot there for the garlic bread and that goes in last and I'm letting out all my heat so I should probably put this back in ah. and there we go okay good so now this is a gourmet blend of mushrooms. It's a combination of uh, uh, white mushrooms and criminy mushrooms. Now, honestly, it's whoops. It's actually cheaper if you just get some white mushrooms and then get some criminy mushrooms. Wow, stay in the pan <laughs> and uh, mix them up yourself. But you know, again, I'm lazy, so I get the the pre-blended mix at the supermarket. Um, yeah, best place to get them in terms of budget, I find, is Walmart because you can get a pack of each for about a dollar forty each. Um, whereas the same amount of mushrooms pre-mixed as a gourmet blend <laughs> at Savon is about five bucks. So it's considerably cheaper getting them at Walmart. That said, though, the mushroom quality is a little better at Savon, so I guess that's what you're paying for, slightly better quality stuff. All right, so everything's just going to kind of simmer for a little while, so 
let's uh, let's check the comments here. I haven't actually checked in since we started, so let's see what's everybody doing here. Uh, let's see. <laughs> I knew it. Yeah, I knew as soon as I said I was going to be making steaks, um, there'd be a whole bunch of you talking smack to me because you think I'm crazy for doing it the way I do it. All right, here we go. So let's see. Uh, Manic Crime says, hopefully there is no fire with this activity. Yes. <laughs> Stout asks, where do the bananas come into play? Yes, I got a uh, big bag of Chiquita bananas today. And we had a few left over from the last batch. They were uh, definitely past their prime, so it's time to replenish the supply. Got to get the potassium in there. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Stout Man says, steak pan. For my uh, steak and mayonnaise prime says casserole for my casserole dish because uh, my brother's name is Cass, of course. Uh, let's see, hunk of butter sounds like a musical genre. <laughs> Stout uh, comments that the dial on my burner doesn't go to 11. Sorry, yes. Stout thought it was adorable and Rosie wanted to stir something. <laughs> Uh, Major Matoko comes in and immediately asks, any injuries so far? No, but I dropped some garlic on the floor. Uh, Stout says, this is the best show on Twitch. The tension is killing me. How will he use the bananas? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Stout, you so silly. And Stout says, now his kitchen will smell like rotting garlic until he finds the clothes that fell under the stove. Yes, I will fish them out today. Uh, caramelized bananas on top of the steak? Yeah. No. The bananas are not a part of the equation. They're just ripening on the counter, you crazy people. All right. <laughs> Stout says that all actually all sounds like it could work. Oh, look, barbecue sauce on steak. Here's where the steak aficionados come out in force. Yeah. Garbage Gamer says, I'd be less offended if he used a good barbecue sauce. Wow, F you. This is great. It's not like super gourmet, but it's affordable and delicious. Um, let's see, like Famous Dave's or Stubbs or Berman's or Sweet Baby Ray's. I actually have had Sweet Baby Ray's. Uh, it was on sale a while ago. I tried it. It was very tasty, nice and tangy. Um, yeah, it's good stuff. I, I like that. I think we just got it here in Canada because I don't recall having seen it before. In fact, do I still have it? Yeah, I do. Actually, right here. <laughs> the only reason I didn't use it is I don't have enough because I used it uh, last time. So, next time it's on sale, maybe I'll grab some more. But, um, let's see here. Uh, uh, where we go here? Sweet Baby Ray's. Uh, <laughs> Stout says, must be. Well, we know he's not a vampire. And Major Toka says he would wear garlic clothes around his neck then. Uh, Garbage Gamer says, wait for waits for his man boobs to catch on fire. Yes, thank you. Because JL keeps saying it's like Mrs. Doubtfire. It's like Mrs. Doubtfire. This is like Mrs. Doubtfire. It's kind of like Mrs. Doubtfire. You guys seen Mrs. Doubtfire? This is just like that part in Mrs. Doubtfire where Mrs. Doubtfire did those things in Mrs. Doubtfire when she was cooking in Mrs. Doubtfire in that scene in Mrs. Doubtfire where Robin Williams played Mrs. Doubtfire in Mrs. Doubtfire. You see Mrs. Doubtfire? We get it! It reminds you of Mrs. Doubtfire! Let's move on now! I don't even know why. Like, <laughs> I'm not in drag. I didn't set my, my tits on fire. I, I just don't understand. Anyway, okay. Uh, yeah, the major tug says it's just a lot of garlic. Skin slip. Skin slip walks in and just says heathen steak. Uh huh. Uh, Stout says your father was a madman. <laughs> Garbage gamer. <laughs> Loved my slip of the tongue when I said barbecue. Perfect for garbage barbecue. Wow, you guys are harsh. Um, Garbage gamer says shitty like bullseye. Uh huh. I don't know why you look, don't like Bullseye. It's like an awesome brand. I use it all the time. Um, what? I was just gonna say, um, I'll have the steak for breakfast tomorrow. Okay, and I'll that's. I'll just have some fruit for for dinner because I'm not. Okay, you're not. Extremely hungry. That's fine. I'm just like a bit because. Yep. Yeah. All right. Sounds good. Uh. 
uh, Garbage Gamer says, Bitch needs a foreman. I actually, I have one. Um, What's a foreman? A I'm going to show you. Just hold on a second. Uh, now what do I want? Great. Actually, I'll oh, clean. Oh, my God. Get out of the way. Uh, I have one. A George Foreman grill. This is actually one of the original ones. Is that a waffle maker? No, it's it's a grill. Oh. See? It's a grill. Oh, looks like um, um, the way waffle maker. I have made thing. steak in that. Um, problem is, it cooks it way too fast. Um, that and sucks. it tends to be overdone almost every time. Um, yeah, I, I use it for. Actually, to be honest, I haven't used it for anything for quite a while. I don't know what the hell is on the bottom of it, but it's just like plastered to my hand now. Uh, let me uh, rinse those for you once you get them in the bowl. Uh, they're kind of all together. Um, alright, well. I can just a big bunch of them. Alright, hold on. Or not. You, know, I'm you, you, that. you can break apart the bunch, you know, you can take like, is that enough? Yeah, it's enough. I'm going to add some grapes too. I mean, you add some grapes, right. some grapes to your grapes. Yeah. <laughs> gonna add some some gold fresh berries. All right. I'm gonna dump them in there. I suck at opening things apparently. <laughs> All right. There you go. Thank you. You just like rip everything open. I know. I'm aggressive. I just want to get to the food. Nice strawberry. Just put them in there and I'll rinse them. I'll take all of them. All right. That's good. good. <laughs> Did you want a banana as well? No, honey. I'll have one tomorrow morning. There we go. Rosie is having a rainbow. Oh, there's the camera. Rosie is having a rainbow for dinner. Well, there's two cameras. There's that one for the stove, and then that one for. I only saw the, the tall one. I didn't yeah. see the one for the stove. Alrighty. I'll be watching from the monitor. Okay. Ah. I'm working Actually, on my topic. Speaking. All right. Cool. Let's give that a little stir here. But see, that's the thing, is the, the technique that I use, it, it, it's on the label. Like, it's the standard way to use barbecue sauce. So I don't know how you use barbecue sauce in the States or what you use it for, but here in Canada, it has always been a thing that you put on steak. Like, always. Uh, just like ketchup chips are a thing here. You go to the grocery store, there are aisles and aisles of different kinds of barbecue sauce intended for the purpose of putting on steak, whether it be in the oven or on your uh, your grill. I don't know why you choose to be so closed-minded and ignorant about the varieties of steak that you can enjoy, instead choosing to hate rather than experience. Oh well, you are lost. Ah, let's see, Team Man says, I like to used to, used to do what? Where am I? Where am I going here? Oh, this the chat jumped. I was like, "What's going on here?" Uh, your father was a madman. Uh, hates bullseye barbecue sauce. Yeah, yeah Tune Man said uh, regarding the George Foreman says, "Love those garbage gamer places steaks done." <laughs> yeah, garbage gamer says he started with the Foreman and now he uses a ribbed cast iron skillet, ribbed for her pleasure. Um, do, 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 do. Manic Prime says I like steak to be pink but not red. Yeah, usually that's how I get it. Uh, try to make it as well. Um, do, do, do. <laughs> yeah, Toon Man says, what if they want it well done? And then says, we tell them politely but firmly to leave. <laughs> yeah, let's see here. Toon Man says, Dear Nizerak, if you see this, don't forget to remove the adhesive seal from the garlic bread foil. Actually, he says, not critical, but otherwise it charged. Actually, that's the reason I don't remove it, because I know the bread is done when the label is charred. 
That's literally how I gauge when the bread is done. So I actually leave that on for that specific reason. Uh, Stout Man says, for those who weren't paying attention, he just put the steak in the oven. I'll repeat that. He put steak in an oven. <laughs> yes. Like you're supposed to. Uh, Cages Krupp. Sorry, I can't, I'm butchering your name here. Says, fry the hell out of it. A minute or so on each side, then slide the cast iron into the oven for another couple minutes. Perfect medium steak. Well, I guess that's how, yeah, that's how you do a sear. That makes sense. Um, Garbage Gamer says, have fun reading. He's just so angry. <laughs> He's just so full of rage tonight. Did I piss in your cornflakes or what? Jeez, man. Uh, Stout uh, thought I was in drag, apparently. Uh, let's see. Wow, Toon Man says, I used to do my steaks right from Frozen on the Foreman. That's an interesting idea, actually. He says, nice char on the outside and inside was just above rare. Hmm. Might uh, might actually try that sometime with a really cheap cut of meat that I don't mind ruining like that. <laughs> uh, Stout Man says, we use steak sauce. And some people feel even that goes too far. Yeah. <laughs> and, two, and finally, Two Man says, house on fire. Bread is done. All right. So, where did I put my glasses? Over here. Last I remember seeing them, they were there, and I guess I moved them over there. Anyway, um, yeah, so good stuff. All right, so I'm going to throw the garlic bread in. Meat's coming along nicely. Mushrooms are pretty much done, so I think we're just going to put this on simmer now. Oh, yeah, that looks yummy. Num, num, num. I'm just going to drain off the uh, excess juices there. Hot water going. Yeah, there we go. Alright, so just leave that to simmer. Put the garlic bread in. Okay, now just while we're uh, waiting, there's actually not a lot of um, stuff to do at the moment. So while we're waiting, I thought we would watch this wonderful short film uh, about barbecue week. Just to give you lots of heads up, uh, barbecue or barbecue month, sorry, barbecue month will be in July, apparently. Actually, I don't know if it still is, but 50 years ago or so it was. So let's check it out and see how... Uh, you know, steak was done back in the day, and I'll see you after.